worship with Bryn Mawr Presbyterian Church this fifth Sunday of Lent. Our thought for the day, from the very beginning, God loved us. We were fashioned most nobly. Mactild of Megdeburg. Please join me in the call to worship. We are gathered in the presence of God who asks us to choose between life and death blessing and curse. We are like the people of Israel who were challenged to choose the way of life. We have the freedom each day to begin again by the grace of God. Let us praise the God of love and life who has called us this day to worship. Amen. And now let's join together in hymn 767, Together We Serve. Affirmation. God of grace, righteous judge of all people, we thank you that in love you sent Jesus into the world not to condemn but to save. May your mercy cause us to respond to you in loving commitment that we may discover the true life you offer to us. Amen. The assurance of God's forgiveness is this the good news is that we depend not on ourselves but on the Spirit of God to give us vitality through forgiveness and love. Amen. Now let us join in hymn 753, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Make me a channel of your peace. Let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. There is darkness, only light, and where there's sadness, ever joy. O Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console. Stood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my. 
God be with you. And also with you. This morning's scripture lesson is from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Mary anoints Jesus. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one was, who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit into our midst. Quicken our hearts, open our ears that we might receive the word and take it into our daily living. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The story that was just read is in all of the four Gospels. Matthew and Mark end with a statement that she will be remembered for this gesture of love wherever the good news is shared. John has Jesus commenting on the poor. Jesus was not suggesting the poor should not be taken care of. He's focusing on the fact that he won't be around much longer, and so the expensive perfume is an act of generous love for him. Luke also has this story, but he embellishes it, it into a bigger story and suggests that it is an unknown woman. In the Gospel of John, it's Mary, the longtime friend and sister of Martha and Lazarus, who anoints the feet of Jesus. The naysayer in this story is Judas, who points out that all that money that Mary has could be spent to, and used for the poor. But as the scripture says, Judas didn't care about the poor. The writer points out that he was a thief and he kept the common purse and he often stole money from it. Jesus just tells Judas to leave her alone. He accepts this extravagant gift of love for Mary and affirms her faith. What does this scripture have to teach us today? Some years ago, I heard Bishop Spong speak at the downtown Methodist Church. He used the phrase, love wastefully. I think this says it all. If we love wastefully, is there any damage done? We may love someone who will never love us back, but that does not diminish us in any way. Here, Mary was extravagant and wasteful in her love for Jesus. He, of course, loved her in return. We can, like Mary, in countless situations, we can offer gestures of love over and over. We may not receive love or even a thank you in some cases, but it still will enrich our lives. It'll help us exercise our love muscles and we can become stronger in our lives and that positive energy that we put out into the world will only make the world better in every way. Love is only a four letter word without actions and gestures that communicate to others the deep feelings that we are all capable of sharing. What gestures have we made recently to those we are close to? What gestures of love have we made to acquaintances? What gestures of love have we made to complete strangers? 
These actions only enhance our lives and lead to more possibilities for joy. Amen. We will now join in hymn number 754, Help Us Accept Each Other. Almighty God, once again we have gathered and we ask that you be present with us. As we think about our lives and the lives of those we love and the lives of our community, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would strengthen us in our faith so that when we have an opportunity, we can reach out and touch another life and make a difference. Today we focus on the many people on our prayer list we lift them up before you, all their concerns with health and other issues that they're dealing with. We ask for their healing and their wholeness and their strength. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless this church and its ministry, and that you would bless the wider churches in the Presbytery that they might be doing your will. We pray, O oh Lord, that the leaders of all Christian denominations throughout the world are led by your spirit. So they are going on the right path into the future. Help us not to despair. 
Help us to trust that you are in the future and you are there to help us through any obstacle we have to encounter. We pray, O oh God, for those who are broken by grief and the loss of loved ones during this pandemic, those who are having mental problems that are destroying their families and destroying some of the individuals themselves. We pray, O oh God, for all those all over the world who are suffering. And we pray that there might be more justice when it comes to treating this pandemic so that all in the world may receive healing and wholeness. We pray all these words in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join in the benediction. Let us go gladly into the world. Be filled with the love of God, dance to the song of the Spirit, and befriend the Christ in each new day. Amen.